Hey YouTubers, I've been noticing something on uh, line. I've watched a few tutorials on how to build steering for go-karts and such. I've been doing it a long time. I, well, 50 and 15 is 65 and I'm 64. So I've been doing it 50 years, give or take. But anyway, something that they're leaving out, and I know they know it, they just forgot to put it in the video, I'm guessing is what's known as the Ackerman Theory. And the first time I'd ever heard the name, Eddie Caudill told me what it was called, but I already knew the concept from fooling with go-karts and trailers and old farm wagons and different things. The theory is whenever you're driving, if you take a left-hand curve, you want your left wheel, left front wheel, to make a little bit tighter curve than your right one because if you were up in the air looking down on it, your left wheel in a left turn is making a smaller circumference than your right, right one making the big circle because of the width of the car. If they're making the same circle, somebody's got a scuff. Now that has nothing to do with when it's going straight down the road. When it's straight down the road, they're directly ahead, maybe a sixteenth in, in, towed in a little bit. That's irrelevant to what I'm trying to get across. Uh, I've seen some... Guys building go-karts that they get big money for. Uh, and I talked to one of them, and he looked at me like I had three heads. But I knew what I was trying to get across. I'm not the an avid wordsmith like a lot of these guys that can lay it out there and explain it well. So I drew a picture to try and get it across. If you're looking down on these go-karts, these two on the left side are the same cart. This is with the tires... This one's going straight out the road. If you got your tie rod bars out in front of the kingpins, you want them canted out toward the tires. In an amount that still keeps your tires straight, but canted out so that when you do turn, the distance in this direction, the distance between my fingernail at the tie rod end and my fingernail here at the center of the kingpin needs to be less and it'll really do some, with this getting down short and all this much throw pushing on that little of a of an angle. And I know I'm not using all the right terminology because I didn't pay attention in school like I should have. Kids, hear this? No. Anyway, he's cutting to the right. He's making a tighter curve with his right tire than the left one just like it's supposed to because this line is closer to the center line down here. And this line is longer, so... This amount of push ain't making that much difference on what it does to this tire, but over here it's really, really getting her out there. That's uh, with the uh, tie rod bars out in front. If they're out in front, they need to be canted out toward the tires. Just a general rule of thumb, and that is if they're on the same bolt. If you got one bolt going through two heim joints right there and they're identical hole, then they need to be canted out. There's a whole other part of this story that can blow that theory and I'll show you it in a minute. If they're in behind the axle, do it just the opposite. If they're in behind the axle, you want them canted in toward the frame. And the theory is, if you're looking down at a car or go-kart or whatever, if you draw a straight line between where my fingernail is on the kingpin, the center line of the tie rod end, center line kingpin, center line tie rod end, and center line of differential in the back, they should intersect. This should touch. This should touch at the center of the back axle. That way, no matter how little or how great you're turning, your wheels are going to be doing the right circumference, left or right. In behind, can them inward. Out front, can them outward. Now, the way you get it, there is a way to get around that. Uh, you can leave them straight and still get Ackerman theory, uh, Ackerman uh, action. If they're straight out and they're on, and not like this picture, but if they're straight out and just on one bolt, both hind joints on one bolt, they're going to turn the same like a lot of ride mowers and a lot of high dollar go karts. But if you overlap them out in front, it makes the center line, once you turn it, the center line between my fingernail and the pivot of the shaft here is less on the one that, that comes over here to the left wheel. 
It's more from the one that's on this side and overlaps and goes over to the right wheel. So this one's actually pushing more distance, turning the wheel more. This one's pulling less distance, moving the wheel less. Same thing if you went the other way. It sounds complicated, but it's not. If, if you got to go straight here, if you already got your king pins made and they're straight, don't put them on the same pin. Do it like this. Put them on separate pins and overlap them. One end from the top, one end from the bottom, and overlap them. So when they get over, when they get over center, the one won't be pulling as far, and the one going to the right wheel will be pushing even farther. And your right one will turn more. Same thing when you go to the left. Hope that makes sense. Um, I'll tell you where you can see a good picture of this to study. I was looking through patents of the Studebaker Corporation up in Indiana. They made farm wagons before they ever made trucks and cars. Um, and there's a patent picture of a Studebaker wagon that is meticulously drawn out. It doesn't say the word Ackerman. It doesn't say anything about theory. It just shows a picture of the Canid. I think on it they were uh, like this. I'm almost sure on that patent they were kicked inward and in behind the axle, but don't quote me on that. Go on Google and Google Studebaker turn of the 20th century wagons or patents, and you'll, you'll be able to dig around and find it. Ackerman theory, uh, didn't know what it was called when I was 14 or 15, but I knew you had to have it or you was going to do some, eat some tires up pretty quick. Along the same idea, I put a straight axle in a Rambler out of a 40 Econoline line, and I put it in backward so that it would steer like a Vega off of the right front wheel, the, top, the drag link would go from the right front up to the steering box and with it in backward, as long as I was driving straighter in a gradual curve, it was fine. But if you got in a gravel situation and cut a tight curve either way, it would scuff and act like it was running over the outer wheel. It'd scuff gravel up. The reason it didn't show up on the wear on the tires is because you make about as many lefts as you do right and one cancels out the other. Going down the road, it was fine. It was the best driving old car around. But you had to think about it when you were uh, pulling in a parking spot on blacktop. If you got it cut real tight, you'd hear them squealing in the front until you straightened your wheels back up. Wasn't a big enough thing to keep me from driving around a 60 Rambler with a straight axle. It was damn cool looking, I thought, in brown primer with chrome reverse. And one time with uh, rocket uh, Krager duplicates. But uh, there's a reason they're made like that. Hope that helps you out some. Most people already know it, but you know, like when I was a kid, I had to figure it out on my own. And if I hadn't, I'd have had some goofy, ill-designed go-karts and things. Wade made motorized mayhem. Uh, these videos end up under John Wade on YouTube. And if you go through all the John Wades and look for the one that says motorized, you'll find my 22 homemade motorized bicycles and a whole bunch of other craziness. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.